What's new? Well, I got a couple of things that I came across uh, for this week. If you don't mind sharing my screen, I would be happy to show them. I'll see what I can do. All right. Almost, almost. Oh, perfect. There we go. That is perfect. Uh, so the first thing that I had on my list for today was this article that I came across from Alexander Kohler. Um, it's a nice short little script on finding orphaned GPOs uh, through PowerShell uh, before planning your migration to Intune. I uh, absolutely thought this was worthwhile to share uh, because this is something... I, I have news for you, Johan. Not everybody has moved all the way to Intune uh, or Entra native joined at this point. I know that might be a little what? shocking. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so we still have uh, we we still have so many people. There are still there are so many people that are still on this journey. So one of the things that Johan and I talk about, not just Johan and I, you'll hear several uh, most of the community talk about. When you're moving from Config Manager and Active Directory over to Intune, uh, so you no longer have group policies, it's a fantastic time to clean up your group policies using tools like Alexander put together here, uh, as well as starting fresh um, with new configuration profiles in Intune. Uh, don't bring all of that 20 years worth of crud over from Active Directory just directly over to Intune. Uh, so 20, these uh, 24, mind you. Uh, thank you for the correction. Absolutely, 24. <laughs> uh, those those few extra years honestly likely added a couple extra, uh, a little bit more crud to a lot of the environments uh, that that we're uh, used to playing around in, um, even our own, I'm sure. Um, that said, any of these tools I think are uh, very useful to have in the toolbox. So thank you, Alexander, for putting this together. Uh, another notification that I came across um, this afternoon, actually, hopefully this is not uh, news to anyone at this point, uh, as this has been happening for quite a while. Um, as many of you probably know, if you did use the uh, Microsoft Store for Business or Store for Education, uh, that particular service has been um, uh, going through the deprecation process for some time now. Uh, and the latest that I saw on that was right here. Um, actually, let me use my zoom it. Store for business and store for education portals will retire on August 15th, 2024. Um, so if for some reason you are still using these portals, uh, note that they will be uh, going away in just a couple of weeks. Are you taking in a bets whether it will be postponed one more time, that deadline, or if it's actually going to stick this time? I don't know. They have postponed it for a while. I, I don't know that I'm up for, for taking that bet this time. Uh, not um, not as cut and dry as, uh, you know, we're going to block uh, SMTP access to Exchange or some, you know, one of those types of announcements, I think. I, I, I think it'll retire this time, but we'll see. And of course, as I say, I don't know that I'll take that bet. I immediately follow up with <laughs> taking that bet. Oh, Johan, I don't know what you're going to do with me some days. I'll figure something out. <laughs> uh, so last but not least, the uh, one thing that I wanted to go over was uh, I published a blog post yesterday on our uh, the deployment research blog, um, a little bit around how we can do some, perform some ad hoc actions um, in terms of reading our uh, LAPS password or BitLocker recovery keys, rotating those passwords and recovery keys as needed, and also reporting on when they have been retrieved or rotated um, through PowerShell. Now, this post focused specifically on Intune and Entra, um, and also on the uh, sort of ad hoc uh, actions. So, for example, if I just want to retrieve a, a password via graph, I can do that with this simple command here. Same with rotating those lapsed passwords 
and with retrieving and rotating the BitLocker recovery keys. So that was sort of my focus for this post was those ad hoc actions. Uh, I do have at the bottom of the post a couple of additional resources that are fantastic. This is a small subset of the BitLocker and Laps resources that have uh, come out across the web over the last couple of weeks. Um, but Steve Weiner, uh, Uger Cook, and Petri have some great tools um, scripts and videos here on how you can do some of these things at, at a greater scale. Um, but I, I hope uh, this post will, will help you out. Again, just another tool in the toolbox for you, uh, as it were. Um, but I definitely wanted to um, uh, hopefully take a few moments here to get some free therapy on <laughs> figuring out the audit logs uh, specifically for BitLocker recovery keys. And I, I detailed this a little bit in the post, uh, so I won't dive into it uh, completely. But of all the things I, I uh, wrote and tested for this post, the gathering the BitLocker, uh, the audit logs for BitLocker recovery key uh, retrieval was not my idea of fun, but I, I got it to work. What I, what I mean by that is when often when you're interacting with a REST API, um, in this case specifically graph, you have a, a number of fields that are available to you that have information in them. So for example, um, I would expect that if you are going to gather the audit log for a BitLocker recovery key retrieval, there's going to be some basic information in there. The uh, person or service or managed identity or service principal that retrieved the key is likely going to be in there. Uh, the time of the action, the name of the action, the type, category of the action. Um, and oftentimes, if it is a, uh, uh, a device or a user or a group or whatever the specific resource may be, that target resource will be in there. So oftentimes that is a device ID, an object ID, a user principal name, a group name, something along those lines. When it comes to BitLocker uh, recovery key retrieval, that at least today is not the case. The information is actually stored in a field called additional info, and it is stored in a long string uh, that Here's, here's the example for it. Successfully retrieved BitLocker recovery key associated with key ID. And then there is a key ID for the specific BitLocker recovery key. Um, and then backed up from the device. And you have an Azure AD device ID that shows up there as well. Well, there is a little bit of regular expression work that needs to be done here to pull out that second GUID, that Azure AD device ID. Um, so with a little help, I was able to get there, um, but uh, I just needed to vent for a minute. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Regular expressions will do that to you. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. They'll either drive you to drink or drive you to therapy. I, <laughs> I don't oh, know. Both. Yeah. Oh, I don't know which. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So for those of you that, that need to do this through PowerShell or would like to do this through PowerShell, um, I, I would love to hear uh, if you use this, uh, that you either were successful with it or um, there needs to be some work here. Um, I just wanted to throw these things out there uh, for a little bit of help because uh, I know that we've all been talking about laps and BitLocker now for two weeks straight. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, uh, I've been rambling on for a little bit. That was what I had on my list for today, Johan. All right. Sounds good. Um, I have some good news. Uh, Excellent. About three weeks ago, we were asked a question regarding an unattend XML file for autopilot that we can leverage on just any given USB media that will just take the machine up to the out-of-box experience right away. And I said, yeah, of course, I will do that. And then CrowdStrike happened, and I absolutely did not do that. Uh, but now I've done it. Excellent. That so, is good news. Uh, let me um, get rid of some stuff, and I will share my screen. Um, 
when I find it, I will share it. How about that? That sounds good, like a plan. And that looks right. like your screen. <laughs> yeah. So this is it. Just the basic antenna file. Now, I could argue and say that a better option is to create an MDT offline media. Uh, and just to show how that was different, I spent some time this weekend and recording a video on, on how to do that because it will basically take you about an hour to set it up from, from nothing to finish. And then you have a media that you can use for just ad hoc deployments, uh, USB stick, whatever, install Windows, install drivers, install applications. And since it's a sequence, it's so easy to put in some steps to do whatever you want to do. But if all you want to do is an automated unattend file that will bring up the machines to autopilot, this is it. It will do exactly that, no more, no less. So here we are, finally fulfilling my homework. Excellent work. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, so in addition to those two things, I'm just going to snatch that link while I, I remember it. Um, I'm not going to play the video, promise. <laughs> but we do keep an eye on our links here on the Academy. Uh, and we share them under our live stream. So I want to snatch that link. Now, another one that I, I was very excited about uh, and news was uh, an update to Winget or platform update about Winget. In version 1.8, you have the ability uh, to download store apps directly from the store, uh, including all the dependencies, and not just for, for the architecture you happen to be on, but every single architecture, ARM and ARM64 and 32-bit and whatnot. So I was like super excited, but like, oh, great, except it doesn't bloody work. But uh, other than that, it was a great thing. Uh, but we've been uh, chatting back and forth in the community, and Microsoft has been chiming in a few times back and forth, and they even asked to, all right, try a non-elevated command prompt. So I tried a non-elevated command prompt. Uh, try forcing interactive login. Yes, I did, and it prompted me twice, one in the beginning and one in the end. Still didn't get a license. So, uh, well, work in progress. Uh, but the announcement is there, and I'm, I'm grateful for being a tester of this pre-alpha release so anyway absolutely we'll have to keep an eye out on that one it seems like uh, quite a bit of excitement generated around that announcement oh yeah i mean that the, the story is, is great i mean the idea is fantastic but <laughs> implementation ah hmm, not so much room for improvement opportunity for growth yes a, yes yes a standard here yeah <laughs> <laughs> but I, I set up a room for improvement. It's a good one. It is. Yeah. Uh, what else? I think that was pretty much it uh, from from the news stand. Nope. One more thing. There's always one more thing. Uh, we just got confirmation today. We haven't published it yet, but in August, we'll be joined by Rod Trent on our academy to give us a rundown on what the uh, co-pilot for security is all about. So looking forward to that one. And we will probably chat more about it next Wednesday when stuff is published and available on the site. So excellent. Getting there. Um, I just remembered one more thing as well. Oh, oh okay. Uh, yeah. We have talked a little bit about Cloud PKI over the last several months. Uh, and one of the um, uh, opportunities for growth with Cloud PKI was the fact that you could not delete the root CA, um, and that was rolled out uh, just this week. I oh, yeah, the deletion rolled out this week. Yeah, you're right. I saw yes. that. Was it uh, Mr. Hicks that <laughs> mentioned that, or was it someone else? I've seen quite a few now at this point. I've seen a, a few folks from Microsoft mention it. Richard absolutely mentioned it. Um, yeah, quite a few. And I know that was a you know something that people had really been looking forward to uh, that was missing in the platform. All 
All right. Well, um, maybe not the news item per se, but a finding. Will, will that qualify? Absolutely. All right. So uh, we are running a, an upgrade class this week. And we've been playing around with all sorts of customizations. And I stumbled across uh, this little uh, feature that if you have a setup config in the file to you know, drive customizations for, for example, into, and you fat finger the name of a script, I did that. <laughs> uh, then you get uh, this error on the screen. Uh -huh. And I was troubleshooting my command lines for a good while. <laughs> <laughs> Just I realized it was the script name that was wrong. Whoops. They didn't say exactly that. No, it's a little, uh, yeah, a little ambiguous there. Yeah, what a better bit of note saying, you idiot, you typed your script name wrong. <laughs> All right, sorry. Yeah, file not found, something. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, and then I just sent a question out to to Twitter uh, just like an hour or two ago. Uh, I was hoping for something to truly crash an upgrade every single time so it would roll back. And I, I was quite successful with the Veracrypt driver for a while, but I couldn't get the crash every single time, and that was annoying. So i just curious if anyone out there uh, happened to know uh, someone who can put together uh, or know of what a driver that, if you reflect it, would crash the the upgrade and, and cause a rollback. If anyone happens to know, let me know. All right. Uh, maybe we can contract CrowdStrike. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> oh. This is funny. You you might be one of the only people, Johan, that I would expect to uh, ask the community for a driver that will crash something every single time. <laughs> Want to have reliable crashes. <laughs> of course. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> 